Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And for, day, for today's Christmas card series video, I am participating in a blog hop with Scrap and Stamp Canada's design team. And our challenge was to use um, Distress Crayons, which I've had several sets for, well, since they started coming out a long time ago. And I don't reach for them very often, so I'm kind of glad this was the challenge. It kind of pushed me to pull them out and play with them again. So I decided to go kind of all out and do four simple cards. This is something you could do, like mass produce these for your Christmas cards. I kept them very flat, etc. So I started with four pieces of Distress watercolor paper and I've taped them to this great big cutting board. Um, in the end, I didn't really need to do this because I didn't like move this around or set it aside to dry or anything, but that's what kind of the whole point was. And I only placed tape at the top and bottom. I didn't bother taping, you know, around the entire borders or anything like that. I just needed something to hold them in place since I was doing four of them. And the best, personally, what how I like to use Distress Crayons is to scribble them onto um, a non-porous surface. So here I just have my little Art Impressions palette. So I've scribbled the crayons onto that and I'm just activating them with water and using my Wide Ranger paintbrush to paint them onto the watercolor paper. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of different kind of color combos and create, you know, either ombre effects or just rainbow effects, etc. And all of these, I end up doing two layers of color just to kind of brighten it, intense it, and intense it. Now, the dr Distress Crayons, um, if you don't work with them, like work them up really, really well, they'll still have little, you know, dots and whatever of the pigment from the crayons. I honestly don't mind that at all. I also didn't mind that there were brush marks in my backgrounds. I did these fairly quickly um, because I was doing four of them. And because honestly, let's all just admit it, I was running late as usual. <laughs> So I started with my first one and I did, you know, some blues and then some purples. And then I would just wipe off my palette with a baby wipe and then get to scribbling on some more colors. So I think at this point, Distress Crayons, all every color is available now in the sets. I'm pretty sure. So I don't have all of them. I know, shocker, but that's all again, because I don't reach for them often. These are great if you're into like mixed media and that sort of thing. Um, these are amazing for that because there's just so many things you can do with them. But I'm more, yeah, clean and simple. I prefer my Distress inks and my Distress Oxides and whatnot, but these are still fun. They give a different sort of look and a different sort of texture to them. So for my second one, I did some kind of reds and pinks, purples, and then into that deep um, chipped sapphire, which has got some purple in it there. So just kind of blending everything back and forth. If you want a really smooth blend, you could get the cardstock wet with clear water before bringing any of the Distress Crayon color to it. That would get the color to move a little bit and, you know, blend. But like I said, I didn't mind the brush strokes. I kind of liked it. I liked that bit of texture it gave to it. So and adding the second color or the second layer really helped kind of intensify these colors, which I really liked as well. So I was just making a big old mess here, getting color all over everything and just having fun with it. So I kept going on and just doing different combos. Um, after the reds and purples, I did um, some green and blue just kind of going along and adding. I didn't worry that I'd got color from the first one on this one I'm doing right now. Um, cause like I was, I was just making a mess, but I am planning on trimming these down because that painter's tape is kind of in the way. So these are four and a quarter by five and a half pieces of, um, the distress watercolor paper. So I am going to have to trim these down, which I knew, um, starting off. That's also why I was a little messy and not worrying too much about the edges. Cause I'm going to cut all that off anyway. And as a final one, I had to do a rainbow one just because I love, this is the set. I think this is set one of this or the very first set I got, of course, it was the first set released and I love the bright colors. So I had to do a rainbow one with all the color from it just because it was so fun. And again, once you do the second layer, it really kind of intensifies those colors. So once everything's completely dry, I pulled out my um, little Tim Holtz paper trimmer and I trimmed off, trimmed off about a quarter of an inch of all of the sides. So these pieces end up being um, five inches by three and three quarter inches. So I just went around, trimmed off all those ends. So that removed the bits that were covered by the painter's tape and then the edges and whatnot and has all of these just uniform. So I'm doing my typical kind of mass production method is do everything, every step for all the cards all at once. So I did all the backgrounds at once. I trimmed them all at once and now I'm going to start stamping. 
So I pulled out my mini Misty for this because it just enables with mass producing to make things simpler. Um, not necessary. You could just use a, you know, large acrylic blocks or um, like the Fisker stamp press, which I've had for years. But I wanted to use the Misty because I'm stamping since I did all this on the textured side of this watercolor paper. I want to make sure these stamp plus it just makes it quicker to do all of these at once. I'm using the Mama Elephant Seasons Wishes stamp set that I just love. I love all their stamp sets with these great big huge scripty sentiments and then there's tons of companion little sentiments with them. They have so many different ones. So I pulled out this one and I used my anti-static powder tool first on this and I poured the embossing powder over it just to make sure it's not clinging to anything. It's completely dry. And then I'm inking up the stamp with Versamark ink. And for all of these, I end up stamping the sentiment twice. That's where the, you know, the beauty of the Misty comes in handy is I can stamp this twice to make sure I get as good of an impression as I'm going to get. And then I'm pouring over um, Tonic Nouveau's classic silver embossing powder for this. I love this embossing powder. I was raving about the gold one in a previous video. Um... And yeah, the silver is just as fabulous. It's very f almost foiled looking. It's so fun. So I went along and did the exact same thing to all of the cards. Anti-static powder tool, stamped the season's greetings, sentiment with Versamark ink, coated it with silver embossing powder, and then melted that with my heat tool. So once all of these have the sentiment stamped onto them, I'm going to um, line it back up in my Misty, and then I'm going to use Snowflake images from the Mama Elephant Holly's Snowflake stamp set. I did think about adding like die cut snowflakes. I have one of the Mama Elephant Snowflake die sets. That would look really pretty, especially like in vellums and whites and whatnot. But like I said, I wanted to keep these cards really flat today, plus just kind of go simpler. So rather than fiddling with any die cutting or anything like that, it's just straight up stamping. So I've got all my sentiments stamped and then I want to arrange the snowflakes. I put my clear little grid acetate sheet over top of this. That way the stamps aren't touching the surface of this because I didn't want to get like my fingerprints or anything on here because I don't want to fiddle with embossing powder getting where it doesn't want to be. So this just kind of protects my surface but also gives me a spot so I can kind of lay out the snowflakes how I want them to be oriented on this card and I surprisingly only picked out a few. It's hard for me not to use every single image sometimes. You could, you could co cover all the open space of these with snowflakes, but I decided to just use a few in the top and bottom corner. So once I had those um, in place, I was able to just close the lid of my Misty, pick them up on that and then remove the acetate sheet. And then I use my powder tool again, just to remove any static or any chance of the embossing powder sticking to anything but this. And then again, stamp the snowflakes twice, and I do that for all of them, just to ensure that it's stamped really well. And then I'm using here are its white embossing powder. I would have used Nouveau, but I don't have Nouveau white in my stash. Shocker. I will have to order some. <laughs> so I use my Hero Arts white embossing powder, which I really love. It's such a crisp white. I've been using it now for I think close to a year or something like that. And it's just a fabulous white embossing powder. So stamped the snowflakes, coated it with a white embossing powder, and then melted that with my heat tool, and then went along and just did every single one over and over again. So they all have their sentiments, they all have their snowflakes. Now the card bases, which is some just MFT grout gray cardstock, a really pale gray. So I cut two sheets in half lengthwise, so I've got pieces that are four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I'm scoring them at five and a half inches with my score buddy and my Teflon bone folder. So I'll have all my card bases folded, and I'm going to go and stamp sentiments on the insides of all of these. And I'm using sentiments from that Seasons Wishes stamp set. There's several that are perfect for the inside of cards. So I just chose a different one for each card. Lined it up in my Misty. Made sure it was straight. And then I'm going to ink up the sentiment with Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I did think about heat embossing the sentiments, but I just thought the black ink would stand out a little bit more and a little bit easier to read because these are such small um, sentiments. So I went along, stamped all the sentiments. Once I had all the sentiments stamped, I used the same snowflakes I used on the front of the card and lined these up again on the inside of the card. And this way I can easily stamp the snowflakes on every single inside really quickly and easily. So got those lined up, closed the lid of my Misty, and I'm just inking those up with um, the same ink as the cards. Like this is Grout Gray ink from MFT. 
Um, you could use Versamark, but I've said it in a previous video, Versamark doesn't show up as well on light, co light colored cardstock. If this was a darker color cardstock, you could totally just stamp it in Versamark and you'd get a tone on tone effect, you know, the watermark effect. But on light colors like this, it, it really doesn't show up. So I like to use either just a light gray ink or the same color as the cardstock. So stamped all the insides and that finished off all the insides of the cards quick and easy. And then for, um, to adhere all these, like I said, I wanted to keep these cards really flat, easy to mail, easy to make several of, um, but you could totally pop this up with foam tape and like, you know, go all out with the embellishments, all that sort of thing. I, I really had to rein myself back from doing that. <laughs> So I coated the back of all the watercolor paper with my Xyron Mega Runner and made sure to go all around the perimeter, added it to the center because these did warp with all the watercolor and the heat embossing and everything and press those down onto all of my card bases. So I have all of my cards technically done. And like I said, you could pop things up with foam tape, add die cut snowflakes. They really, you know, take these up a notch. But I kept these simple. My last only embellishment, and I couldn't resist. I had to do. I had to do something. So I pulled out my Perfect Pearls powder in Perfect Pearl and Pewter. Used my little tonic craft spoon, which was perfect for that, and just put um, almost equal amounts onto an acrylic block. And then I'm going to mix these with some water, so that I've got um, fairly thick. It's not super runny, but just a nice bit of shimmer there on my acrylic block. And then I can use that brush to just flick it against the edge of the acrylic block and create some fun silver splatter just to kind of tie it all together and just give it that little, that little bit of something. This is, you know, this is my not going all out and not adding tons of layers. You could totally skip the step, but I love, I love the splatter. I gotta have splatter. So splattered all of those, let them sit for a few minutes to dry and that finished off all of my cards. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a link to Scrap and Stamp Canada for those that my Canadian, my Canadian peoples that like to watch my videos. I'll have a link to them. They carry a lot of awesome products as well as to multiple sources for all these supplies. So check out the description box below my video if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting my vi on my videos. I really appreciate the support and I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.